we are finally ready to do some applications in partial differential equations. Aren't you excited? I bet. So usually uh, the first thing you learn about when you're doing partial differential equations is how to measure the heat in a one-dimensional rod or a bar. <laughs> so here's my nice, my bar. Um, I don't know what it's made of, but there you go. So you'll notice I've labeled it a little bit. Uh, so the length of the bar is of my variable x. So here at the very start it's zero and here it's L. So for the entire length of the bar, so depending on how long your bar is. And this thing, this is a, my function u and u measures the heat of the bar. And u is a function of the spot we are on the bar. So uh, the temperature might be uh, different here than it is almost to the very end, I don't know. And t, the time. And um, the partial differential equation that we're going to be working with, quite famous, um, is this one right here. Yeah, pretty great, I know. So let's talk about this for a second. So alpha squared, this is called, uh, I'm gonna say this right, diffusivity constant. Uh, anyway, alpha is a number. And um, basically tells you like how fast heat dis uh, how fast heat disperses through the material. So for example, silver has a diffusivity of 1.71 centimeters squared per second. Uh, water has a alpha squared of 0 0.00144 centimeters squared per second, so not very much, I guess. Um, we're not gonna be too concerned with the actual value of alpha. Um, if you're really uh, interested in it, um, alpha is, gotta look it up here, um, K, or kappa, which is the thermal conductivity over rho, the density, uh, times s, which is the specific heat of the material in the bar. So um, I'm not going to be worried about any of that. I'm just going to treat alpha like a number. If you're really into like engineering and physics stuff, maybe you're more interested in that. Um, but not me. Okay, we've got some initial conditions we got to talk about. So my function, if I plugged in zero for t, I would only have a function of x. All right, let's get that out of the way. And my x values are only going to be defined from 0 to L. That makes sense, right? I'm only going to be talking about the values on the bar, nothing else. Now there's some other things we need to do. Um, if I plugged in 0 for x at any time, that is the very left side of my bar, I'm going to assume that temperature is 0. And I'm gonna do the same for the other side of the bar. Now I can get into why, but more or less, they're gonna be trivial solutions or they're gonna be boring um, when we don't do that. So we're just gonna look at these initial conditions, these boundary value conditions. And these might look familiar <laughs> if, uh, if uh, you saw my last video. Ah. So I still need to talk about this. What is uxx and ut? Well, this means the second partial derivative in respect to x, or I'm taking the derivative in respect to x and then again, and that's gotta equal my function in respect to t one time. So our answer, u of x and t, which is what we wanna find, satisfies this differential equation with these boundary conditions. And we're going to do that. So I hope you're ready because um, we're going to get into it. I'm going to rewrite some of this stuff, rewrite what I need. So I know alpha squared u sub xx equals u sub t. And my initial conditions were u of 0t equals 0 and u of lt equals 0. I have one more assumption I have to make. 
I'm going to assume that my u of x and t um, is a product of two functions. I'm going to assume it's a product of two functions. All right. And one of those functions is only going to be uh, in terms of x. And the other function I'm calling t is only going to be in terms of y. If I keep this assumption, that means this equation is going to be alpha squared u of xx, x, that means I'm taking the derivative of this thing in respect to x twice. If I'm taking the derivative in respect to x, t is a constant. So this will be x double prime times t. I'm not going to write the of x and the of t. Here, I'm taking the partial of this function in respect to t one time. So this is going to be x t prime. I don't know what the derivatives are, I just know that this is true. Um, now I can do separation of variables. I can separate this, right? I can, um, I can divide by t and I can divide by alpha squared and I can divide by x. So if I divide by, if I divide by alpha squared t, I get this. And then if I divide by x, I'd get x double prime over x equals t prime over alpha squared t. So I just did a little separation of variables, nothing too exciting. But here's where the magic comes in. Since these are equal, and I'm talking about the heat, this has to be a constant. Now for reasons we'll see, I'm calling this constant minus lambda, and this is sometimes called the separation constant. So if you don't make this observation, uh, it's pretty hard to do the problem, but we just have to recognize that both of these things equal a number. Now, if I take just this first part and the lambda part, I'd have x double prime over x equals minus lambda, or if I multiply both sides by x, and then add the minus, or if I add lambda x, I get x double prime plus lambda x equals zero. And if I take this part and I multiply both sides by alpha squared t, I get minus lambda alpha squared t, or that I get t prime plus lambda alpha squared t equals zero. So I have two separate differential equations to solve. And hey, look what I just did. X double prime plus lambda X equals zero. If you watched my last video, I'm gonna take this thing and uh, I'm just gonna pull the solution that I got from last video. I solved this, this first one in the last video and it takes a while to do, but uh, and I did it with these initial conditions. They're a little different, but they are the same. So last time we got for this equation, let's see, we got that x, and I have to do this sub n because if you remember in the last video, we got that uh, our solution was periodic by pi. So we got that x was sine of n pi x over l. That's what we got with those initial conditions last time. And um, we also found that lambda was n squared pi squared over l squared, if you remember that. So if lambda's m, and th this was from the last video, by the way, if you're very interested in where I got those values, uh, you can go check out that video, it should be somewhere nearby. But if this is lambda, I can plug that in for here. That would be t prime plus lambda, that's n squared pi squared uh, over l squared times alpha squared times t. This is just a regular uh, linear first order differential equation, which you should be pretty good at solving by now. Um, 
and the solution to this, I'm not going to go through it. Uh, if you want to see how to solve first order linear differential equations, uh, I'll either make a video or you, somebody else has a video. Um, but the solution to this is T equals E to the minus that thing, <laughs> N squared, pi squared, alpha squared, or L squared times T. Fantastic. So I have my X, I have my T. Now all I need to do is write them as a product, right? Because that's what this was all about. So I have to put UN, and that's because I've got periodic solutions. And there should be some constant here right um, actually let me deal with that in a bit let me just skip to this so xn is sine n pi x over l and that's times uh, this thing e to the minus n squared pi squared alpha squared over l squared t Whew. wow so this is the answer to the heat problem. Congratulations, you got there with me. Um, but we can do a little better. See, this is true for n equals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What if I want, uh, what if I just want a cleaner solution? What if I sum both sides forever? What if I sum n equals one to infinity? Well, if I sum all the un's, if I sum all the partial solutions, I'll just give me u. And this thing, well, if I sum that, I'm just gonna write it in summation notation. It's gonna give me some constant. I'll call Cn. And I don't know why, but in the book, they usually write the e first. sine n pi x over l. And this cn can be found using uh, your Fourier series knowledge. So there you go. This is the solution of the partial differential equation heat problem. Uh, this was a doozy. Uh, it's hard to make a video about it. I hope I hope you found it informative. Really all you need for the class is you just need to memorize this. <laughs> so um, maybe you don't care too much about the derivation, but I think it's pretty cool. And uh, just memorize this guy. I know it's a lot to memorize, but there's a lot of repeated things. So if you have any questions, leave it in the comments. Uh, please like and subscribe for more videos like this. And let me know what else you wanna see. Uh, I know a lot of people wanted me, to, wanted me to do this video, but let me know what other videos you guys are really, really wanting. Okay, thanks.